Another episode of 1923 Main Street. Home of the Disney Travel Podcast with the latest Disney Travel news. We are your hosts. I am Mike Bella Braddock. And I'm Amelia Bella Braddock. And today, finally, some Splash Mountain news and more benefits for guests of the Disneyland Resort Hotels. Yes, just when people are complaining about Disney taking away hotel benefits, at least at Disney World, they're bringing some in. At Disneyland. So basically, head to California. But let's start with my told you so moment. Oh boy. When did they first announce the overhaul? What, 2020 maybe? It's got to be a couple of years already. It would have been 2020. Right. And so at that time, we can go back and listen to the episode. I predicted it would be a Bayou theme, as you may recall. Didn't they announce it was going to be a Bayou no, theme? No, they did not. And, and now we know Tiana's mm-hmm. Bayou Adventure is coming to both Walt Disney World and Disneyland in late twenty late 2024, they said. Oh. So that could easily push to 2025. I still believe they are going to rename the whole area of the Bayou in, at it the end of Frontierland. Yeah. And then link it to New Orleans Square somehow in Disneyland Park. But I was happy to see... That the Imagineers are still listening to our show and taking our suggestions of how to theme things and et cetera, et cetera. But I did yes. chuckle when I saw Bayou in there. Uh, I do like it. I think it's a great theme, obviously, because it's the one I thought they should do. Mm-hmm. All right. So what do we do? They were spending a lot of time in Louisiana doing research and as they do to make sure things really get to the heart and soul of what they want it to be. And they are taking extra care in this one, I'm sure. Because they yes. really want it to be a really good overhaul. Yes. So uh, from what we can get, this will take place after the events of the movie. And we will yeah, see... Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. But we'll see Princess Tiana, Naveen, and of course, the jazz-loving alligator Louie on an adventure through the bayou as they will prepare to host their one-only Mardi Gras celebration. It's going to be interesting to see if they just take the alligator who's in there now, or crocodile, whatever he is, and if he's obviously just got a paint job or if they really take some... Like, I guess what I'm getting at is... Yeah. How much are they really going to make this fresh and new? It sounds like they are. It sounds like they're planning to do a complete overhaul. But we'll, well I guess we'll have to see how The alligator is one I was sort of thinking of when we went through Splash Mountain last trip. And yeah. I was looking at him. Obviously, he would be in the bayou and we'll just see. We'll see. It's going to be I fun mean, to see is. how it comes together. Like, he has a character from it, so it would make sense if they just Yeah, so there's it. new music as we travel through the bayou by boat, the original music, ins- inspired by songs from the movie, so I'm not sure what that means. Um, are they are they the movie songs? Are there more songs? What songs are they using? I'm imagining kind of like a reprise, but I could be wrong. Yeah, could be. But it's going to be fun. They could make it sort of spooky, because, you know, the bayou can no. be scary and sketchy. Or they maybe they'll do both. I would really like to see them have a scary, sketchy part and then sort of comes to the yeah, happy not music. On Splash Mountain. It's not Splash Mountain anymore. Or whatever they're calling it. Tiana's what? Bayou Adventure. I just discussed that. No, Bayou, but Bayou. That's what they're actually going to name it. It's called Tiana's Bayou Adventure. Oh. I will post the logo this week. <sighs> Why is that a big sign? I don't, I just, Did you want a cool name like, yes. that, that isn't obvious, like Cinderella Castle or Tiana's Bayou Adventure? Isn't the, is Tiana's Bayou Adventure sounds like a ride that's height limit is two inches. Well, Splash Mountain isn't exactly... I don't even... Does it have... Yeah, it does have a height limit, I think. No, I just... Anyway. It makes it sound like the Barnstormer. Well, you know it's not going to be the Barnstormer, so don't get hung up on the title. I know. I just... Like, they could make a much cooler title. Yeah. For all the thought they're putting into the attraction itself and the I detail. I feel like the title really negates the coolness they, of the attraction. They put less thought into the title. <laughs> Did they put any yeah. thought into this yeah, title? it's pretty literal. All right. Well, we'll see what happens. At least we know something is happening. They haven't announced, actually, when Splash Mountain will close. Uh, there will be uh, a rush on not only merch by our favorite pirates. I say that sarcastically. 
Uh, <laughs> and also by people wanting to ride it one last time. So we better make I mean, sure we hit it in August. Maybe that's their marketing strategy. And we'll see where that goes. Give advance, advance notice. So all of these people will go, last time, last time. Which we did about a year ago. So Now let's talk know. about some benefits. Yes, finally, Disney is giving you some more benefits for staying at a hotel. We're just going to highlight some of the... Now, let me say, they put out a release on this, and they listed a whole bunch of stuff, and a bunch of them were like, well, that's not really a benefit, as far as I'm concerned. So we're not talking about those. We're talking about what are actually a hotel guest would view as a benefit, not something that isn't new. These things are sort of new and added, right? The yeah. other stuff was just like, oh, I know it's close to the park. It's you know, not that, that's benefit. not, that's not. So we're going to discuss five things I think we have that are actually new benefits. Yes. And so, they even have like starting dates. So you know it's new. So firstly, starting on August 8th, 2022, they're bringing back extra magic hours. At Disney, kind of. At Disneyland. <laughs> So what they're doing is 30 minutes prior to each park's opening, um, the guests can enjoy select attractions, dining, and shopping. Yeah, so, so not they won't everything. have the whole park open, but and yeah, that's pretty not good. Not for an hour, but still, that's better than what they had before. So. It's always something worth taking advantage of if you're staying in that hotel. Get out of bed and get in there before the rest of the masses do. It is an advantage, yeah. so I'm glad I they're just, bringing that back. I just love hearing people come in when the park opening go, ah, oh, right at opening when you've been there. Well, like, in this case, only half an hour, but half an still, hour, you know, it gets you on something. That's one, at least a ride. Yeah, it gets you to one ride before everybody else. And if you're only really going to do three in a day, then it's pretty good. And also, they're doing some pool parties. Yes. They seem to be, 30 minutes seems to, <laughs> it seems to be a theme here. <laughs> so they are having 30-minute daily pool parties at all Disneyland Resort hotels. And this runs from July 1st to the end of August, August 31st, not even through Labor Day weekend. They're ending it right before the wow, long weekend. Way to, way to pull the rug out. The Disney Poolside Squad will be on deck to lead games like Water Sponge Relay. I don't know that one. I do. Oh. The fun floaty toss, we know that one. And, you know, obviously music, dancing, Pluto, doggy paddling, and so on. You know what this reminds me of? Yeah. Uh, Alani. Yes. This is what they did there. And apparently Disney characters will stop by the pool to join in the fun. Which also happened at Alani. So I think they're taking a little inspiration from Alani. And also from their commercials. I think they're like... Yeah. <laughs> We're showing all these characters running around in commercials in hotels and stuff. Although they do do that at Disneyland I'm more not, as well. But I'm not going to get over that. You watch this commercial and then you go stay there. And I'm like, where are the characters? Where's Cinderella in the where lobby are... and where are the stormtroopers? And my where are they? And stuff. <laughs> Anyway, so that's pretty good. It's almost like a flash mob the way they do it, uh, at least at Alani. It sort of pops up and there's a big pool party for half an hour and everybody gets really amped. It's not like the ones at Disney World. It doesn't sound like it's going to be anyway, where they go every day and it's more of sort of a pool party. This is more a little bit more exciting with characters and stuff, which yeah. is how they do it on Alani. It's shorter, but it's more exhilarating. Another one is going to be popular too, the next one. Dining delivery. So this is a new feature at the Disneyland hotels and select restaurants in downtown Disney will provide meal delivery services and you can scan the QR code right from your in-room TV to get access to the links to all the restaurant delivery web, web pages and place an order that can be delivered right to the lobby of the Disneyland Yeah, that's Resort pretty hotel. cool. I mean, it's, it's just a nice little convenient thing. I like how they're doing more instead of just room service, you can get the restaurant food delivered. So that's fun. And if you're getting your restaurant food delivered, another thing that they took away from Disney World that people were really upset about. Yeah, you might as well bring it your, back. You might as well have your package delivered as well. Yeah, at Disneyland, I should say they're bringing it yes, back. Yes, at Disneyland. No, no, no. <laughs> Give so Disney World guest amenities. When? Never. This one starts also on August 8th. So after that is a very good time to head to Disneyland. And yep. you, you can have your park purchases delivered to your Disneyland Resort Hotel the next day. The next day. So and if I, it is your checkout day, <laughs> don't yeah. do this. <laughs> I mean, if you don't need it like immediately, it's a good service. So you don't have to. Yeah, especially if you're buying some. Sometimes you want to buy big things like a, I don't know, a sign or something. And you go. Or a delish oh. sentiment. Like, oh. yeah. And they don't want to <laughs> lose that sale because you're saying, I don't want to carry this around all day. Uh, so that's pretty good. They'll del they usually ask you. When are you checking out? So because yes, they, they want to confirm yeah, that you will get it. your... We, we did this once or twice at Disney World where they were still doing it. And it worked for us. We didn't have issues. But they did take it away, probably because they don't have enough resources right now at Walt Disney World. It yeah. just requires cast members running all over the place. 
A lot and, of stuff they took away because of COVID and just haven't well, really added back yet. Disney World has 10 times at least the number of hotels. <laughs> Disneyland yeah. has three, right? So Yeah, so which hotels does this include? This includes... Paradise Pier, Disneyland. Grand Californian, yeah, okay. and Disneyland Hotel. So yes. that's pretty good. And this last one is something I've never heard of before. I like it. It's pretty cool. Preferred Dine Access. Yeah. Do they not have that at Disney World? No. What does this give you? So Preferred Dine Access will offer Disneyland Resort Hotel guests the opportunity to have preferential access to a limited number of reservations at certain hotel table service restaurants during the dates of their stay. So that's pretty good. If you want something that's a hot ticket, it sounds like they're going to sort of put aside a few for people actually staying there. It says more details are coming soon on this. When, how far ahead can you book it? I don't know. How many tables are they putting aside? It It might still be a hot grab. It's not going to be unlimited, but it is a pretty cool thing. So I do like that one. Preferred dine access. So those are some actual cool things that you get when you stay on site at Disneyland. You know, I like that they're doing that thing. I like Disney World, take note. Yeah, Disney World, take note. And these are limited times, so they're not committing forever (laughs) with resources. I guess they'll see how they go. Yeah. All right, we talked about this before. Next story, Bibbidi Bobbidi is coming back on August 25th. Yes, and this is at both the Magic Kingdom Park in Walt Disney World and the Disneyland Park at Disneyland. Yeah, and you can start making your reservations in early August. They did not say a date again, so early August through my Disney Experience app or DisneyWorld.com or the websites and the apps and all that sort of stuff. You do need to have a park ticket <laughs> to yes. get to the boutique if well, it's it- the one in the park. <laughs> There is one at the Grand Floridian Resort. It's not mentioned here, but I'm assuming it will open as well. Well, never assume with Disney. (laughs) And for our golfer friends, up next in our next story. Disney's Magnolia Golf Course will be undergoing the most extensive redesign in the history. Yeah, these used to be big PGA courses. The Magnolian Palm right beside the Grand Floridian there. There's four holes, 14, 15, 16, and 17, that are being completely reimagined with new layouts and new landscaping. If you play these courses, I'm sure this will make sense too. We only play foot golf. I'm sorry, is it, is it not just grass? Or holes no. not just grass? Also, speaking of that, the course's 18 greens will be upgraded to create an even more pristine putting surface. Plus, holes 16 and 17 will be connected by a new wooden cart bridge through the forest, and several fairway and greenside bunkers are being installed along with more challenging tee boxes. So, so if you play golf, this must sound really exciting. So, to there's you. a lot of our family members who are going to be excited about this. So, some Hopefully big changes coming they can to the Magnolia. Explain it to me. Yeah. <laughs> and this is coming later this year, it says. So, this is not far, far off in the future. Yeah. Well, again, they have not given exact dates, but. And now, the moment you've all been waiting for, no, our, <laughs> a staple in almost every episode is Shockingly, the foodie guide. there's yet another foodie guide. What is this one? This one is an orange foodie guide. Yes, it's the Disney Springs Flavors of Florida. It will take place Flavor from... Flavor ju- of Florida, singular. Flavors. No, I know, but really. Oh, it's no, one. there's more than one <laughs> flavor here. It's not all orange. Mm-hmm. Um, It runs from July 5th, uh, pretty much right now, through to August 14th. There's 30 restaurants taking part. Check our show notes and blog posts for every single dish everywhere. But as we always like to do, we're going to tell you which ones we think you should go for. Yes. And I'm going to jump right out of the gate here at Amaret's Patisserie in Disney Springs. Well, they're all in Disney Springs, so I don't have to say where they are this time. Is the Blood Orange Eclair. Mm. Now, this is an eclair filled with triple blood orange mousse topped with a tangy citrus jam and candied blood orange. Are you seeing the theme? Yeah, it does sound like a lot of orange for a Flavors of Florida Festival. Now, the next one is one I think you were interested in. Yeah, well, or was it, it mine? It, no, it this was yours. mine. However, was it's mine. at the Boathouse. It's at the Boathouse. Everyone's favorite restaurant at Walt Disney World and just ever. So. Yes, one of our top. Take it the away. Coconut Panna Cotta. So it's layered with mango gelée and topped with tropical fresh fruit, shredded coconut, and crispy coconut shortbread cookies. I'm surprised you went for this. You're not a coconut person. I know, but fresh coconut, I don't mind. It does sound intriguing. It does sound intriguing, so I'm going to give it a try. And if I don't like it, you'll eat it. Or mommy will. (laughs) Somebody will eat it if I don't. Well, that is true. And What's next on our list? Moving on, at Chef Art Smith's Homecoming, we have some southern fried hand pies, which is basically just a pair of fried pastries 
filled with moonshine glazed strawberry compote and served with a scoop of vanilla bean ice cream. Yeah, that sounds okay. Doesn't really wow me. I don't need to be wowed. I just need it not to taste like well, lunch. Well, I need to be wowed. And how about this one? At the, now, the House of Blues, not a place I normally go. Big chain place, not a fan. But they have voodoo shrimp. This has me intrigued. Sautéed Florida golf shrimp in amber beer reduction sauce served over jalapeno cheese cornbread. All right. That, Corn, cornbread. I don't know if I even want to... I wonder if I can get that for takeout because I really don't want to go in and sit in the House of Blues. Um, what's up next? I do have... Okay, there's a couple of Dole Whips that sound interesting. I don't know if they're mine. There's an Orange Bird Dole Whip you might want to try and then this Watermelon Dole Whip. I don't know if I would try a bite of it or not. Why are you giving me a look? I'm not. I'm not. I'm trying really hard not to sing right now. Anyways, so the Orange Bird Dole Whip. Mm, another orange. This is just soft serve Dole Whip, which is orange flavored topped with sprinkles and an orange bird garnish. Was this on your list? You know what? I would try this. I would try this, but mostly just because I like Dole Whip and I don't want to try the key lime one. So I will try the orange one. And close it out with your, I think your favorite thing on here. This is, hang on here. This is another one I picked. This is a pineapple this and coconut shake. This is a Vivo shake. Il Gelato. So it's a gelato stand, I believe. I assume this tastes exactly like a pina colada. It sounds like it will. But this is a pineapple and coconut shake which is a rich and creamy shake made with pineapple and coconut syrup meadow topped with a mini pineapple and coconut layer cake. Yeah, it sounds like it's going to be a sort of uh, pina colada cake. It sounds really similar to the pineapple upside down cake shake that they had at Animal Kingdom last year, which I didn't get to try but really wanted to. Yeah, well, you can try so, that this summer, definitely. Hopefully, fingers crossed. I actually want to try both of my picks, so we'll see. And before we go, I just want to mention in our show notes and blog posts, we will have the full lineup now for the 2022 Eat to the Beat concert series during the Food and Wine Festival at Epcot. There are some new acts in there, so check it out. All of them are listed all the way through from July to November. Just waiting for 50 years when my favorite singers are there. Yeah, that's right. 50 years from now, the current singers will be there. All right, everyone. Thanks for listening. You are now caught up on the latest Disney travel news. We hope you have a magical week and we'll see you again next time. Bye-bye.